niggas. You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another book review. Once again, today we have another non-fiction political commentator book. This one is Speechless by Michael Knowles. Now, Michael Knowles is a conservative political commentator on YouTube. Uh, I first discovered him through uh, his appearance on TimCast IRL. Uh, and uh, one of the things that happened on this show is uh, Michael Knowles' fans in the chat were uh, spamming plugs for... Uh, his book, Speechless, and it was sort of based off the way he used to plug Speechless in his videos when it first came out, where he would have a sentence where he'd say, this left me speechless, much like my new book, Speechless, which was now available on Audible, which, by the way, it being available on Audible is relevant. That's how I listen to it. It's actually included with Audible, too, like, you get it included with your subscription, which I thought was cool. So what this book is essentially about, the full title is actually Speechless, Controlling Words, Controlling Minds, and the premise of the book is one that I partially disagree with, but I do agree with elements of it. And in fact, uh, there's a lot of things with Michael Knowles that I do disagree with on a lot of things. I do think that overall, culturally, I agree with him on a lot of things, but uh, he is uh, predominantly coming from a Catholic worldview, and as such, some of his stuff is much more based on theology, whereas I'm not very religious myself. I'm not, necessarily, I'm not an atheist. I consider myself more agnostic with a lean towards theism, though I'm not sure, like, that's just something that I feel is a question that's harder to answer, but, um, in that regard, I also think that because of that, that is what causes a lot of the differences in worldview that I'm going to have with his book. That said, I thought it was a very good book, and I thought his points were very well made, even if I didn't agree with all of them, but the premise of the book is that, is that you need to have standards in a society, and that there there's no such thing as complete free speech that you need that inevitably standards will always arise and so you want those standards to be more of the traditional standards that we've typically had and while i can see the reason in that he does kind of deride uh libertarianism and uh free speech absolutism as simple platitudes and slogans that don't amount to much I disagree wholeheartedly. Obviously, I am a proponent of free speech absolutism, and this book is very much against that. So, obviously, big disagreement there, but I thought it was very interesting to hear his points on why. And again, I do think that we do need some sort of culture, and I do think that culture should be encouraged through media, education, and all sorts of things when you're growing up. But just because I believe those things should be encouraged doesn't mean I believe we should censor others. And he advocates for good censorship, which I personally do not believe exists, and I know there are plenty of points where he says people who have my worldview are part of the problem, and he, he said in videos on his channel that he finds libertarians more annoying than hardcore communists, and that kind of stuff, it's like, it's just something I know we're not going to agree on. I, like, I myself, I'm, I, 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 I call myself pretty much a right-wing libertarian, right? Like, I do have a lot of old conservative traditional values, but I'm much more focused on personal freedom than tradition. Though I think tradition is very important, I think it's something that should be more socially encouraged and socially sought after rather than having to go through legal repercussions. Uh, for instance, in some videos, Michael Knowles has advocated for arresting people who produce pornography. I'm completely against that, and uh, he's also said, you know, pornography isn't protected by the First Amendment, whereas I think whether or not that was intended at the start, I definitely think in the spirit of the First Amendment, pornography should be covered because it is free expression and it's not violating the rights of anyone else. So therefore, I think it should easily be covered. I'm very much against obscenity laws. The only time I think that I think they make sense is when an illegal act is made to produce the content. So when it's something that's illegal, that's different than something that's just explicit, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's ridiculous when people say that obscenity should be illegal, just obscenity on its own. And even in the book, he does sort of advocate for obscenity laws using logic that is kind of contradictory to his logic talking about other laws regarding censorship and political correctness, because he kind of points out that political correctness is vague, and therefore that's a bad thing about it, but then he even acknowledges that obscenity laws are inherently vague, and you say, you know it when you see it, standard, and then just kind of brushes that off as if that's okay in that scenario, and I'm like, that's kind of hypocritical, but okay. Again, I do really like Michael Knowles, 
and I liked this book. There's just a lot of things I do fundamentally disagree with, even though I do think, fr from a place of culture and tradition, I, I think we'd agree on a lot of things. But uh, he also tries to say that, like, you know, libertarians have no understanding of liberty. And he has this weird idea that liberty is only sought after through God, and that liberty is the right to do what one ought to do rather than what one wants to do. Which, if it's something you ought to do, then it's not a liberty thing. It's, if it's something you're supposed to do, that's not a freedom. That's just you doing what you're supposed to do. So I don't really understand the logic on that one. It is what it is. Overall, I did think the book was very interesting in going over the history of political correctness and tracing it back to its roots and kind of following this timeline of it in multiple aspects of culture and education. I do think he makes a lot of very interesting points on that, and I think that that was probably the thing I had the most interest in in the story was the history of political correctness, because it should be no surprise that I personally do not like political correctness. I am very much against it. I think people should be allowed to say and do what they want as long as they don't violate someone else's rights. Um, and that's kind of the standard I have. I definitely think, though I disagreed with a lot of this book, I did agree with a lot of it as well. It's, it's something I had to accept that we're going to disagree on a few fundamental factors and just get on with the parts we do agree with and understand his reasons for why we disagree. Obviously, I identify more as a right-wing libertarian than a conservative, but I do have a lot of conservative values, and I definitely align with conservatives way more than with leftists. And again, I think that culturally a lot of things should be encouraged, and I can understand what he's saying about standards inevitably rising up. And I do agree to an extent that that is bound to happen. But what I think is those standards should be socially encouraged, not legally enforced. I think legal enforcement of those standards is where you end up with authoritarianism, and I can't stand that. I do think he has a point that uh, a lot of people do use freedom just to get power and then oppress the other side. As we see with a lot of leftists who used to be pro-free speech and now want to go against such innocuous terms as hate speech and to attack things that are problematic. So I definitely think that there is something to be said about that. I just don't agree with getting enforcing standards by force. That's a big problem I have. And obviously, I I'm much more okay with, like, obscenity than than he is clearly i do think a large part of that does come from his catholic worldview and my uh, i guess agnostic worldview again i i was raised a mormon so i used to be pretty puritanical myself um but i'm not anymore and i haven't been for some time and i do agree that there is a problem with people misrepresenting things as fact that aren't a lot of people who claim they support the science completely deny biology and other fundamental parts of science, so I definitely think there is something to be said about the way that the education system has been infiltrated. I think part of the solution to that is homeschooling, private schooling, and looking into that. I think school choice is very important. Something I really like about Michael Knowles is he's really well versed in uh, quotes and old philosophy and uh, intellectuals of, you know, the past eras. He definitely has a lot of knowledge on that stuff. He's very good at quoting that stuff, and it makes the book much more interesting in that regard because he's able to use good examples for these things. And again, though I don't subscribe wholeheartedly to religion, I do think that the Bible and Christianity was a very important moral framework in the founding of this country. And I do think it is important that we had a moral framework to go off of. Uh, and I do think that that is important to, to, to realize that and recognize that. But I also don't necessarily think we should take all of that moral framework literally, and we shouldn't impose it. I do think it is important to have a culture, but again, as I've said multiple times throughout this video, I think that should be through social encouragement and, uh, you know, putting it out there in media and things like that, rather than trying to enforce it on someone. Because you try to enforce it on someone, you're just going to go in a cycle where the right goes for power and, like, tries to uh, make people more puritanical. Because that was the problem I had with the old right. Like, back during the, uh, you know, the moral panics and satanic panics and stuff like that, right? Where everything was, like, trying to be, like, pure and, like, saying that video games caused violence and, you know, saying that, like, rock music would make you worship the devil. That kind of stuff was fucking ridiculous to me. And I don't want to end up in another era of that. And I definitely think that there are a lot of conservatives, Michael Knowles most likely included, that would love to have that kind of stuff come back. So yeah, overall it was a very good book. I disagreed with a lot of premises in it, but I did agree with a lot of others. And I did understand the one... 
I did understand his reasoning for a lot of the things I disagreed with, and I think it was mostly sound reasoning. I just don't agree. Um, that said, is a very good book, uh, and again, it's included with Audible, so that was pretty cool, too. Uh, but yeah, that's all I really have to say about Speechless. I do think it is important to listen to things that you may not necessarily completely agree with, and, and to um, understand where you do agree with these things, and uh, understand why you disagree. And I think that's why it's very important that free speech is protected, despite the fact that this book is kind of advocating for censoring other kinds of speech, you know, stuff that I, censoring stuff that I necessarily don't like, you know, like uh, leftism, but nevertheless, I would never advocate for censoring it. That just seems insane to me. Um, also, another thing I do want to bring up, a point that I do think is important, it's, it's not one that he made in these words in the book, but it is one I've heard elsewhere that I do think is on the same logic of this book that I think is also very true, which is... It's very easy to advocate for communism in a free society. It is almost impossible to advocate for freedom in a communist society. So I definitely understand why he has those ideas of wanting to set the standards. That way you're not overtaken by communism and subject to that. And I, d I think that's important too. But anyway, that's all I really have to say. I hope you've enjoyed this review. This has been Fugitive Red. I have a good one. Toodles. It looks like you're going to the Shadow Realm, Jimbo. Looks like you're going to the Shadow Realm, Jimbo. Have fun.